And we're back with a little bit of oxygen not included. Uh, last episode we got uh, our industrial sun up and running. Now I want to use all of that refined metal and all the resources I've acquired to automate this hatch farming and make an automated evolution chamber for all these hatches. Uh, if you omelette an egg, you get about 2,800 calories out of it. However, if you let the egg hatch, evolve into meat, and then cook it up in the grill as a barbecue, you get 4,000 calories. You no longer need pepper nuts, so now they're just... Well, barbecue is ridiculously efficient. So all you want to do is automate the uh, the hatch evolution process and automate them getting to the cooking area. Now, I'm going to start ripping out all these natural tiles. The reason being, I was keeping them around at the start. I thought maybe I'll have some use for them later with pips and planting, and, you yeah, know, that, that's not going to happen. I'm just going to rip them all up and replace them with normal tiles so I can uh, install this evolution chamber without any difficulties. So there is that all tiled in. I've decided I'm going to put the little chamber over here. Now, I saw a wonderful little design on Reddit. I went back to try and find it again so I could give credit to the person who created it, but unfortunately, I can't find it. Uh... Reddit's searching system is not that good, it seems. Now, all we're going to do is put in a little chamber here where we can drop in some water and then drop the hatches in there to meet their untimely demise. Now, to do that, we're going to need a little bit of automation here. Uh, oh, no, shipping. And we're going to have a conveyor rail to drop them off. So that's where the eggs will get dropped out. Then we'll stick in this conveyor rail and we'll use copper because copper is... Well, it has no real benefits and it's plentiful enough on this map that I don't mind wasting it. For the shipping, we're going to use conveyor loaders. Uh, do I have enough copper? Let's see. Yeah, copper's at the start. I, I should really remember that, and I've got about 10 tons of it, so I think I'll be good. Now, a good thing to do is make sure that they're tight to a wall so that you can get the eggs out of there as quickly as possible. The, even if the egg is in the conveyor loader, until it exits the room or enters a wall, then it's not classified as being out of the room and it will stifle any egg production, further egg production, assuming uh, you've hit uh, a certain level of uh, hatches in the room. Uh, more copper rails. We'll just, you know, we'll use the, we'll put it along the fire pole. There we go. Pretty much that simple. This is going to be a pretty quick build, to be honest. That will allow us to pull out all the eggs out of these room, dump them up here. Now I'm going to need to put some water in here. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I need about... 800 to 1,000 kilos of water to make sure these uh, don't recover. Oh, and I'm going to want to lock this. I don't want any dupes getting in or out of there. Dupes can actually reach through this grill and reach things on the other side, so the meat on the other side can be reached also by an auto-sweeper, and they can pick up the eggs that end up in here and dump them into these uh, my unpowered incubators. Now, once they've done all of that, we're going to have to start setting in the... this. We have to decide what's getting picked up, uh, it's a fairly simple matter, we just need to find critter eggs. And there's three types of eggs they can potentially drop, and you want to select all of them. We've got stone hatches, sage hatches, and where's the regular hatches? Hatches? Hatchlings. Those three. That's the that's the only possible eggs they can lay, that's all we want, and then we can copy those settings to all the other ones. Well, we will once they, they, they finish building them. Uh, while that's going on, I might want to stop the eggs from being extracted from the rooms. Uh, so what we'll do is turn off stone hatchings. Get rid of that. Also, you're just sage hatchlings. So all those eggs will no longer be cracked. Instead, we're going to wait until they're picked up, dumped across here, and dropped off in this particular area. Oh, water. Oh, enable auto bottle. There you go. That should dump in 200 kilos per mm, 200 kilos per chunk, and we need about 800 to 1,000 to successfully mm, cause the hatchlings discomfort. Oh, uh, this here, this is my new seed storage bin. I dump all my seeds in there just to keep those pesky little pips from getting their paws on them. Oh, and once this is done, we're going to need to get the eggs out of there and bring them to the cooking area. Do that. It's fairly simple. Oh no, did I use steel for these? Yeah, that's a bad idea. We're just going to use copper for them. 75C is all we need in terms of restriction say. Hmm. I just thought of something. No, that won't work. This can autofill those two ah, incubators. Should have thought of that. Now we also get a loader load them up. Okay, that's the loader in place. We're also going to need some power for this as well. Grab a quick conductive wire made of lead, because lead is extremely plentiful and cheap. There we go. Then a shipping rail that goes all the way up to our cooking area. Copper, yes please. Uh, we'll put it up this back ladder system. Now I need to drop it off somewhere close by to this, so conveyor receptacle. Yeah, this will do for now. 
that will mean any meat that accumulates in here. Oh, there's our first egg. Once the eggs in here hatch, they will have problems breathing in liquid. So they'll evolve to their next level, at which point they get sucked up and dumped in here. We're going to set this to meat. Once the meat's in there, it will get chucked in across the rail, go up here and get dropped off there. This will automatically fill the grill and the grill is automatically set to barbecue. That should mean all of my... Ooh, why is that egg there? You know what? We'll just crack that one egg. Why not? Yeah, there we go. That will get hatched. That will get cracked and turned into an omelette. The rest of them will get sent off there. Now, there is one downside. There's going to be about 20 cycles. It takes 20 cycles for an egg to hatch in the just on its own. So it'll be 20 cycles before I get any more food income. Well, excluding gate packages and things like that. So I need enough food to last for 20 cycles, and I definitely do. Uh, for 14 dupes, that's about 1,400 calories every 10 cycles. 2,800 calories. Yeah, that's all I need. So I've got enough to last 40, 50 cycles or so. And I've hired a couple more dupes. I should probably cover that. Uh, for the new dupes, we've got Tinker Tot. They're a tinkerer. And we've got not the mama. They're going to be skilled up to be another dog's body. I've only got two dog's bodies. Three is the minimum I need. I should probably get a couple more, to be honest. Now that this is up and running, I can decommission a couple of these uh, ranches. The calorie increase just means I don't need nearly as many ranches anymore. I might just decommission this one up here and maybe that one down there, the furthest ones away. I'm also going through my filtration medium at a ridiculous rate. I think I had about 600 tons of sand at one point. We're down to 294, and it's only cycle 223. Maybe, 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 just maybe, I've been running a little bit too many hatches. Anyway, now that that's all set up, I'm going to decommission. Oh, it takes about, doing the math, it takes about 1.5 hatches to feed a duplicate, if you're making barbecue. So, that means that I can run about 5.3 duplicates on one hatch, one ranch, assuming I have eight hatches in it. So let's just round that down to five. So it's five, 10, 15, 20. That means I can run 20 duplicates on four ranches and get rid of these other ones. I'd also want to move that water tank down. No, 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 actually we'll leave that water tank there. So in that case, we can, uh, we can dispose of some of these. Yeah, that'll do. Get rid of you. And then deconstruct these. Yeah, perfect. That'll also give us some barbecue to start and tide us over in the interim. Some of the side projects I took on in the background were I installed a 10 extra atmosuit docks just so I could get more duplicates in and out. Uh, it's just hooked up to my what, my second oxygen line. I'm going to put in an extra 10 uh, atmosuits later so I can have a full 30. It's just one kilo of oxygen per pipe. 10 atmosuit docks. All works out, right? Uh, what else was there? Oh, yeah, I redid all the bedrooms and put them down to my new, new, new design for decor. Um, oh, actually, I did up a decor uh, tutorial. I'll, I'll put that up at, at some point, probably when I'm running short of uh, episodes. The, the reason being, I'm just doing one episode five days a week is eh, it's too much of a commitment. I can't do it. <laughs> Between work and, you know, family life and whiskey, it's just there's not enough time in the day. I barely have time to binge TV shows anymore. I mean, what's the world coming to? Now, uh, next up, I would love to get into doing massive decor upgrades. Uh, the problem is I don't have enough diamond window tiles. I might want to start producing massive amounts of glass, which is quite easy. I might just rip out some of this and put glass in here. I can dump the glass forges in here. It should, yeah, that should eat the heat from the glass and make glass production rather simple. Uh, I've also expanded the power supply here just so I can make sure, mm, I haven't changed those though, just so I can make sure I can keep up with any power demands that might potentially arise. Uh, Coal-wise, we're still looking... Well, we should still be looking great on coal. I'm not going to worry about it. But first, I'd like to try and tackle another little side project. Down here, I have a large chunk of abyssalite at 1400C. There was a comment from Speaker, and he was wondering why, like, should I hook up a steam turbine to this and use the steam, the heat from this to run a steam turbine? My answer was, it's too much effort, uh, getting the steam turbine, building a room for it, getting the steam into it, and then having to dispose of it all once the, the steam, had, well, once the heat has gone out of it. However, they did suggest, what if you had a steam turbine nearby, you could then, you know, move the materials there. So I'm thinking, what if I just dig this up and dump it into my uh, hot industrial brick? I've got access to a steam room, why not just dump all the uh, hot obsidian in there? So I think that's the next project I'm going to tackle. So this storage bin is set to Obsidian, and it's set to Priority 8. 
and it's set to sweep only. So what should happen is if I dig up any obsidian and set it to sweep, say down here, I should be able to sweep all that obsidian into that storage container and the heat from there should start to transfer into the room. This is not without risk. Uh, I say that because uh, if a duplicate is carrying boiling hot obsidian around the place and happens to stop in a liquid lock, let's say, and then lunch is called and they drop that piece of boiling obsidian in the liquid lock, that water's not going to survive. It will instantly turn to steam. So if the duplicate drops it in there, I'm going to be in trouble. It's going to break these, this vacuum seal I've got going on. So to help cut down on any risks to different parts of it, I'm going to split up this vacuum chamber I've got through here and just make it three separate ones. It should just make life a little bit simpler. And I'm going to use ceramic for that actually. Be, ooh, no, wrong button. I'm going to use... Still, the wrong button. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to use ceramic for this because this is where... This will help prevent heat transferring from inside here into this uh, water. What are those bricks at? 60. Yeah, they're, they're not really transferring heat very well, and that should keep them all separate. So once those ceramic tiles are in place, it's going to be time to tackle this and see if we can turn this obsidian into something useful. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, oh, and another great thing. Why is that not... Oh, that ladder's already been encased. Never mind. Another great thing is this whole area is full of carbon dioxide, which has ter terrible thermal conductivity. What is the the conductivity on that is 0, 0 0.015. So hopefully the heat won't transfer too well. My duplicates, I don't want my duplicates bathing in 1400 degrees C gas. That will scald them even through the Atmos suits. Atmos suits are going to get up to 750 roughly, 750 C. So we'll go down here. We'll see if we start getting scalded. If we do, well, and that might be my cue to maybe dig up here until I can find some sand or water. I can dump water down there. No, no, that would cause splash of steam. Never mind, never mind. We'll dig down here, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get uh, we can get something out of it. Oh, and another thing for the ladders. I'm going to make the ladders down here out of obsidian. Uh, if you use a boiling hot material as a building material, it immediately reduces its temperature to the same temperature as 40C. 40C tops. Ooh, now, uh, what else was I going to do? Yeah, that looks just about reckless enough. So, once we break in there... Ooh, that... Oh man, that's going to make sweeping up really annoying. I'm going to have to sort through all of that. Yeah, I can live with it. I can live with it. It's fine. I'll I'll, I'll find the obsidian one way or the other. It's how big is that list? Oh god, that's a long list. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Probably. Uh, so first up, the carbon dioxide has already hit 1300C. That that's not good. My dupes don't appear to be getting scalded yet. I think the thermal conductivity between the carbon dioxide and them is just so bad they're not getting scalded. So long as I keep sweeping up the debris in a reasonable time frame, I, I think this might actually work. Uh, the only debris I'm not sweeping up is the stuff directly on the ladder, because that's several tons of sand and a bunch of other random stuff. Hmm. And how's her... Oh. I'm running out of space already, aren't I? That's not transferring temperature very well, is it? Hmm. Like, you know what? Deconstruct this. We're going to need another sweeping bin. Otherwise, I'm going to start putting this stuff in the wrong places. Uh, yeah, I didn't think that there might be more than 20 tons in there. I'll cancel out that. Yeah, I'm going to need a couple of more storage bins. One moment. So our storage bin of obsidian is not cooling down very quickly. It doesn't seem to be generating a lot of heat. A little bit, but not a lot. The reason being... Uh, these storage bins only have a thermal conductivity of two, so they're pretty weak sauce on the thermal conductivity. However, a storage bin made out of a refined metal like iron has much higher thermal conductivity. So I was thinking, what if we just, well, dumped a bunch of... What's going on there? They're sweeping in obsidian from around the map, aren't they? Yeah, that, that's my bad. Let's make that a sweep only. I put that on um, anything. Ah, as you can see, that's dumping in a lot more heat an awful lot quicker. That's what we're looking for. And we'll copy those settings over there. This should hopefully get... Well, that's going to generate us quite a bit of heat. Okay, what just happened there? Yeah, I think we dropped some in there. Did we? No, that's 70. What's the water down here? 70. No, that's fine. I just have no idea where that water is coming from. Oh, no, steam got out. How did that get in there? God damn it. Okay, I'm going to have to vacuum this whole place out again. Otherwise, yeah, this whole area is going to boil. One moment. Yeah, this was the very thing I was afraid of. If I don't jump on this pretty quickly, 
these are going to heat up. They're going to absorb heat from this crude oil over here, and then they're going to melt, well, flash to steam, and then this whole area out here is going to get a lot warmer. I don't mind it being warm, I just don't want it over 100 degrees warm. Oh, how's the temperature looking in here? Pretty good. Yeah, those smart storage bins are much better at draining heat out of the area. Now, once these are done, I can vacuum this place out again. This is a mess. I also need to refill this lock. Somehow this lock broke. I don't know why. We're going to stick in some salt water. Yeah, there's a bunch of salt water lying around. They can dump a bunch in. It'll be fine. That should restore the vacuum in short order, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was worried about when I started moving all the obsidian in. I assume something somewhere got vaporized. Possibly this down here, though... You know what? I'm not sure. Something caused this airlock, to, this liquid lock to break. I don't like these liquid locks. I really should have went with two of these double ones, uh, these more robust ones, but you know what? I'm committed now. I'm just going to have to live with it. Uh, the obsidian itself seems to be cooling down quite nicely in here. It's also keeping these steam turbines going quite nicely. I'm generating, what, 267 currents, uh, watts to run those. That's sort of really helpful. Is there anything I want to refine or burn that power on? You know what there is? I'm going to put in a glass forge. Uh, I think I can rip this out and just stick in a glass forge here. I, I don't really need these at the moment. Mm. Wait a minute, let's not rip these out. These are useful. I think I'll rip out the rock crusher and maybe one of the kilns and I can move this all around a bit. So I think I figured out what was going on here. Uh, it turns out when duplicates pass through a liquid carrying a really hot rock or hot anything, it heats up the liquid it's passing through. So this liquid here is what heated up, and it was causing the it causes this the liquid on top of it to turn to steam. I don't have crude oil in here. What I need to do is make these out of crude oil and petroleum. I suppose would be the best bet that would stop them from melting quite as easily. To counteract it for now, I've stuck in a temperature shift plate here. This should help suck any heat out of it as it goes through, and we're just going to dump in some more salt water. This should help keep the liquid lock intact. Well, at least for now, until I put in a more permanent solution. I've swept up most of the obsidian that's down there. Now I just have to let that dissipate its heat in there. There's, damn, there's a lot of heat. But it's not dumping too much heat in. It's very slow, this debris it giving off its heat. So that's going to be a constant source of power for quite some time. Kind of nice. Not going to lie. Oh, you can now be disabled. How much heat is that getting there? Yeah, that'll be fine. That temperature shift plate should keep everything happy now that uh, all the, the obsidian is swept up. Well, not all of it. There's a little piece left down here, about 3.2 tons. I don't have room for it yet. <laughs> I actually don't have room. Ooh! Why don't I just dump it on the ground? There we go. And sweep up the last of it down here. That should be the end of it. Done. Yeah. What do you know? Simple as that. Now, uh, it wouldn't be me messing up a liquid lock again, would it? Yes, yes it is. I completely flooded that whole area with a ridiculous amount of water. Ah, uh, god damn it. Oh wait, there's more over here. Yeah, it just seems like I can't help myself. I, I, I can't leave a liquid lock unattended. I have to automate this. I have to automate them or I will mess it up. That's just the way it goes. On the bright side, none of the hatches are ever going to get out of there. Just not hope. Yeah, let's let's just mop that up and we'll call it a day. Next up, I think we'll go uh, around here and break down into the steam area. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this in here. You know what? I think I'll just leave it down here. I really don't mind if a bit of heat leaks around the place. What I need to do is go down, take apart this uh, caustic biome for iron ore. I want iron ore so I can make more steel. There's another oil biome over here, which I'm going to take apart for any iron it's got as well. Oh, and there's another oil biome down here, which I'm also going to take apart. So, a little bit of a minor modification here. Well, okay, I moved everything around. I made a glass forge in here. This should be interesting. Now, oh no, that's breaking instantly. That's what I was worried about. It is surrounded by steam. Let's see what happens if it goes through a second time. That is ceramic. That's pure ceramic piping. Yeah, it's cracking the pipe. I think running this in steam is not a good idea. What temperature is the steam at? 109. Uh, you know what, let's see what happens. We'll let that get repaired. Hopefully the ceramic should keep, keep, continue to increase in temperature as time goes by and... Oh no, that's not good. Let me do some experimentation here. So I've slowed the game down here. I'm just doing a little bit of troubleshooting. This uh, is the glass forge. The molten glass is at 1710. However, the temperature is plummeting rapidly. 
Oh, and you see they're dipped below 1400. That's probably what's causing the cracks. Hmm. It might be that this water falling down here is sucking heat out of this too fast. I might want to move this slightly away from the water. Maybe move it a few tiles to the left. I'll run this a couple more times just to see. But if the water is causing it, I am going to have to move this just a bit. No, it would appear that was just the first two operations that had problems. After that, it is spitting out the glass with no issues. Excellent. Now I've got a glass forge where the heat from the glass is immediately absorbed by the environment it's in. You know, this this industrial sauna is kind of growing on me. i got to admit, that's pretty handy. And oh, look, another liquid lock is broken. I hate these liquid locks. Maybe it's the salt water. Does salt water evaporate or something? Uh, did, maybe that's a thing? Or maybe that was a regular liquid lock. Why did that break? I really hate these liquid locks. Mm. You know what? I am going to dump more liquid than they need into each one of these just to make sure. I might want to switch to petroleum, maybe. Mm. So it turns out by moving the glass forge, that whole annoying problem of the pipe cracking went away. I think the water here was uh, touching the glass forge, and a glass forge in water is a big no-no. Uh, if a glass forge is touching water, it really increases the thermal conductivity between the two and results in the pipe cracking. So I'm still getting the odd one, though it's not nearly as bad as before. I think I can live with it. It's mildly annoying, but the odd occasional repair thing shouldn't b bother me too much, considering I have, uh, well, the ceramic is produced right here. Which reminds me, I should probably keep... How much ceramic have I got? Uh, ceramic, for some reason, is under raw mineral. I have no idea why. 43 tons. Yeah, I've got 43 tons. I'm not going to make any ceramic just yet. So, considering I've that's pumping out glass, that should get me enough glass to start walling these in instead of using diamond tiles. But I'm going to let that run, and in the meantime, we're going to continue down here. There is more stuff to be mined. So the quest down for more resources continues, and... Oh, and printables. Yes, we want printables too. I think... Well, I don't want the narcoleptics. This one is irritable bowel. They have no interests I want, but I really don't care. It's taking me too long to get dupes. I think I'm being too picky, so I'm just going to make them a general dog's body. This dupe shall be known as Mumra. I, I really don't know how I didn't think of that before. Mumra is just perfect, perfect. Fits in exactly with the theme. Uh, this is going to let out a whole bunch of steam. I'm wondering what will happen to it. I think it will condense at some point as it travels back up. Not going to try and care about this. I figure it shouldn't cause any issues. As it floats back up, it'll encounter cooler and cooler air and hopefully condense. Uh, we're going to pretend like it doesn't exist and find out where all this heat is coming from. Just so I can put a cap on it, I need to seal it in. Three, four hundred degrees I can live with down here. But once we start getting closer to the 700 mark, that's where I start to get nervous. <laughs> so I decided to demolish this, just, well, halving it halves the heat. And I managed to find a lovely Paku over here, and the pool of water it was in appears to have vaporized, leaving the Paku behind. How is it still alive? What's the temperature? 64? Yeah, that, that's, that's not going to survive much longer. The rate its heat is raising, that's going to become a Paku fillet very, very shortly. I think I'll go down and grab that Paku fillet. Why not? Uh, down here has got to be where this heat is coming from. It's The temperature is going up and up the further I go down. So uh, let's have a quick gander down here and see what we can find. Considering how industrious my dupes are, they should be able to cut through this in no time. And I really, really do want that Baku fillet. I think we have found the source of the issue. There would appear to be a double volcano down here. Much like a double rainbow, only much more painful. Um, hmm... So I think a few insulated tiles made out of obsidian will be fine. Stick them in across there, uh, and then we'll put another layer on top of that. That should seal that off. The rest of that is all a bit light around the edge. Nothing I can do about the heat that's already leaked out. Uh, this stuff is 500C. Yeah, once we seal that in, we'll be left with a reasonable problem. Though the amount of steam created, it's like 40 kilos of steam pressure in here. 30, yeah, it's rising as it goes up. But as this pushes its way up, it interacts with the surrounding environment and cools down and then turns to water. You can see it actually turning the odd water droplet occurring there as it touches things that are colder than it. And it drops back down here. That'll help spread out the, the heat a bit. Oh. Uh, let's put that up there. Yeah, somewhere in there. Someone will be able to get in that and get that diagonally. Anyway, I'll just finish this off and then we can get back to uh, destroying all the natural environment. After finishing this off, I took a quick look around and there is a saltwater geyser right here. How much water is there on this map? I have more water than I could possibly know what to do with. 
Uh, for the time being, I think I'm just going to ignore all this steam. It'll eventually escape its way out or cool down in some way. I think I'll, I'll just dig in here, demolish this whole biome, and the heat exchange between it and the water will result in some cooling, I suppose? Probably? So, in true silly idea fashion, this seems to be kind of working. You can see that the sand is interacting with the steam and causing liquid water to form. I don't know if I'll be able to cool all of this area, but this seems like a relatively dumb way to to attempt to cool it all without feeding it into a steam turbine or doing any work with it. This will, of course, mean everything in here is going to be boiling. But we really don't care. We're running a hot base, remember, so all of this is just... Yeah, it's just gravy, really. Oh, that's also got to have a ladder segment. The thing i got to keep an eye on is make sure not to strand my dupes by making sure there's ladder segments where all the sand chunks are going to be. Uh... I might want to actually seal off all through here and just dig the whole way across with my dupes. I am on a resource hunt after all. Hmm. Anyway, I'll just skip this forward a bit. This is just going to be an awful, awful lot of digging. And demolition of this entire biome, or most of this biome, has been completed rather successfully. The steam is now leaking out in here and it's a dumping its heat into all the surrounding material. I don't really mind too much. All of that steam is condensing and forming puddles of water everywhere. Some of it's flowing back down here, and it's drip cooling this area. The pressure in here was 30 kilos and 300 C. Now it's dropped by 50 degrees and 4 kilos of pressure. It should keep dropping. However, it's going to take a bit of time before all of this condenses. So what I'm thinking is... I'll cut this particular video out here, and next up... I'm thinking... I think it's time to put in a petroleum boiler. I could go around and get the natural gas, but that's going to take time and effort, and i got to deal with all this steam I let out. I, I probably could have dealt with the steam a little bit more efficiently. But if I make a petroleum boiler now, I can use the very special properties of aluminum, aluminium, whatever you're from. I can use that to make a much smaller petroleum boiler than normal. I have to do a bit of testing, but I think it can be managed. And you sure might think we did okay this round. We got, uh, well, we got the industrial sauna modified slightly to do glass, and we got an... Ooh, all 99 of that is done. Uh, that gives me enough glass to do some renovations on the old base. Probably get some decor up, but I think I'll leave off on that. The, we've also got this up and running, which has given us... How many hatches? How many eggs have we got in there? 73 eggs. Yeah, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to take before they start hatching and giving us barbecue. I don't think they've started yet. Oh no, I've got 4,000 calories of barbecue. Maybe it's just started. Yeah, it was about 20 cycles anyway. Oh, missed a bit of water. Uh, I think... That was reasonably productive, even if this is ridiculously silly. Let's hope this uh, water condenses in the next 50 cycles or so. That's probably how long it'll take me to build a petroleum boiler. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I'll just cut this out here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.